Hello, so we're going to uh, go ahead and pick up where we left off on the last one. We were talking about average velocity. Okay, and so here's a graph of position versus the time of some object. And so we can see it kind of traveling and it goes somewhere. And at this point right here, you can see that it's actually turning around. Okay, so what we're going to do here, if we wanted to find the average velocity, remember, so that um, slope rather between two points, maybe between here and here. Okay, or we can find the slope there. Okay, the slope of that line. Okay, but there's other ways to talk about velocity besides this too, right? So let's think about when you're in a car. When you're driving in a car, you can look at the speedometer and it tells you a velocity, or rather it tells you a speed. But um, the speed that it's telling you isn't the average speed, it's telling you the speed at that instant, okay? And when we find average velocity, like in this circumstance here, this is average velocity, that's not telling us how fast it's traveling at a moment, that's telling us how fast it's traveling over this period of time. Okay, and so sometimes we're going to want to be able to say, well, at this exact instant it had this speed, in which case we need the instantaneous velocity. And so the way we could find it, say, that instantaneous velocity at two seconds, is we could take this approach with average velocity and we can just continue to decrease the distance away we're using um, or the so like the separation of these time values we can continue to decrease those until we get to the point where we're very 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 close so that the slope of the line is actually tangent to the to the curve okay so like in this circumstance right here and the slope of this tangent line would represent the instantaneous velocity the speed of that instant okay it'd be a tangent line just touching at that one little point okay and so the slope of the tangent line would represent the instantaneous velocity okay so we'll take a look at um this graph right here and we're gonna just kind of analyze some of the instantaneous velocities we're not gonna really quantify them yet just we're gonna talk about them okay and so we're gonna label some of these positions or we'll, we'll look at the times okay so the first question I have for you is when is the object traveling or whatever this object that's moving here when is it traveling in the positive direction would you say, if I gave you two options, when does it have a positive instantaneous velocity? So when is velocity positive? Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you there could be more than one right answer here. Okay. So the answer to this question is is gonna be actually two seconds, because we have a positive velocity right here. And seven seconds because we have a positive slope right there and seven seconds because we have a positive slope right there you'll notice that at both three seconds and six seconds that if you were to draw a tangent line you'll have a negative slope okay at what times does it have a velocity of zero we would say that it would have a zero velocity about 2.5 seconds and 6.5 seconds and oh and about at uh, looks like probably at four and a half seconds too because it looks like it kind of temporarily comes maybe maybe to a stop right there it, it's hard to tell okay and so instantaneous velocity just the slope at any point so what we're going to talk about right now though is how we can actually calculate the instantaneous velocity if we don't no, if we don't have an equation for the tangent line. Okay, so here we have a graph that represents the position of an object. Okay, and I, I chose this graph because I actually have a function for it too. So the function for the position of this object could be written as, um, we're going to say um, 2x, or we'll say 2, t squared. Okay, and so this is the function for the position of this object. Okay, and what we're going to do is I want to find out how fast it's traveling 
at four seconds. Okay, and so we know from before that we can kind of approximate that by finding, say, average velocity maybe between six seconds and two seconds. Let's see that because it looks like that might be pretty close. Okay, and so we're going to try that first. So we'll say, okay, average velocity is going to be the displacement divided by the time. Okay, we need to find the displacement at two seconds and the displacement at six seconds so that we can um, subtract them to find the average velocity. So if we substitute those values for six, about um, 50 meters. So at six seconds, it's at a position of 50 meters. Whereas at two seconds, it was at a position of about two meters. Okay? So we've substituted this formula, the change in position is going to be the second position minus the first divided by the change in time. So we went from two seconds to six seconds, that's a change of four. So it's going to be 48 meters over four seconds, which is going to give us 12 meters per second as our average velocity. Okay, and so that's an approximation of the velocity at that point. But what if we actually want to find the velocity at that point at four seconds? We would need that the slope of that tangent. So what we could do is we could kind of shrink down this approximation until we got those points be really, really close together. And this is actually the definition that something that we learned about calculus. And so before I go ahead and continue, I just want you to stop and um, I want to give you a quick warning. What we're going to talk about right now is something that you have not covered in your calculus class yet, and you're going to learn it the correct way in the calculus class. You're going to take the time to understand the, um, the concept behind it. Right now, I'm just going to jump straight into the shortcut, and um, the reason why is because we don't have time to, to teach the whole background of it in a physics class. So um, the reason I say this is when it does come up in your class, you want to make sure you take the time to do it correctly so you can understand better why you're doing it, okay? But basically, if we find, let's say that we want to find it at 4. So we're going to say x of 4. And when we find slope, we're finding change in position. So that we'll say the second position is something that's just a tiny bit, just an infinitely tiny bit of time further down. So we'll subtract those. This is x of 4 plus delta t, so some change, infinitely tiny change in time, minus x of 4 over um, 4 plus delta t minus 4, because this one occurs at 4 seconds, this one occurs at 4 plus however many seconds it applies. Okay, and using this approach, if we find the limit as delta t, I don't need, I'm not sure if you're familiar with limits yet, I think you are, but if you find the limit as delta t approaches zero, so if we work, work this out and make delta t as close to zero as possible, then we should end up with the slope of this tangent. Okay, and that's in the background, and what it comes down to with a polynomial like that is that we can actually turn this into a function for the velocity at any instant. Okay, so you can get actual velocity function. And so in order to do so, this process here, we can develop a general rule for when we have a, a polynomial function to create this other function. Okay, and it goes like this. You're going to take, you have some constant, you have some term, and you have some exponent. Okay? And when we find the derivative, what we do, we call it finding the derivative, and what we do is we multiply this value to that one right there. So cx, and then we subtract one from this one. This becomes x minus one. So if this is a function, this function right here would represent the slope of that function. Okay, so to follow that process here, we take the exponent multiplied by the coefficient. 2 times 2 is 4, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. 2 minus 1 
so it's one. Okay. Next term, we're going to do the same thing. This is t to the first power. Okay. So one times negative four is negative four. Okay. T to the first one minus zero is zero. Well, t to the zero power is equal to one. So the t goes away. And then finally, in this instance right here, we have two times, there is no t here, we could see. It's as if there's a t to the zero power next to it. Well, zero times two is zero. So that term disappears. And so now we have a function for the velocity. Okay, and so if we want the velocity at four seconds, we could substitute it in. Four times four minus four, so 16 minus four gives us 12 meters per second. Okay, and in this instance, we actually have the same value for average and instantaneous velocity based on that region we chose for the average velocity. All right, so what I want for you to do is go ahead and write a function for the velocity of this object. Okay, think about that real I just gave you. And I want you to try to apply it right now. It's okay if you don't get it 100%. That's not the goal right now. The goal is just to give it a try and see if you can do it. Okay, so after you've tried it, let's go ahead and work it through together. We take the exponent multiplied by the coefficient. 3 times 1 is 3. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Take the exponent multiplied by the coefficient. Give us negative 8. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, 3 to the first. Finally, 6 times t to the 0. 0 times 6 is 0. So that term goes away. And so here we get that function right here. Okay?